Hi everybody, this is Christy. I am the Intimate Warrior. I thank you so much for stopping by. And as always, I send you love. Um, I don't really know at this very moment as I'm making this video what to label this video in regards to. I'm going to kind of uh, just talk about some experiences that I, I have been going through. Some I've already previously mentioned, but I want to link them up and give you greater understanding. And yes, there's more than just my experience that I'm going to be sharing. It is true knowledge that, of course, is going to be attached to it. Um, it was early on in this month that um, we, my, my father-in-law um, came in and uh, put, asked me to put my hand out. And I was like, well, what do you have? Of course, thinking the worst thing in my mind, it must be something really creepy. But then why would he have anything creepy in his hand? He goes, it's a little bird. And it's like, oh! And so I eagerly took the little bird into my hands, and uh, we both went back outside uh, and tried to find um, the baby's nest or the mom and dad or whatever it was. The baby bird was actually found in our driveway, and our driveway is attached to a major um, highway now. So um, we were concerned and didn't want to leave the bird um, anywhere without it, of course, having its home or mom and dad nearby. And it had been windy. Wind. Something that I've mentioned in a few of my videos that we have been experiencing major high winds here um, in our area since about November or so. And so this day was uh, particularly cold and windy and rainy. And so we were, you know, concerned. Um, so I, I found a little box and I put some shavings in it or some um, um, needles, uh, what do you call those things? Um, anyway, I made the baby a little nest and in a box until uh, my husband came home and we could decide on where to put the baby bird or what to do with this bird. And um, so I, I gave the baby some, uh, you know, um, um, water and ground up oatmeal until I figured out, we figured out what to do. And so we called some places, of course, and no one is taking birds in right now. We couldn't find, of course, we couldn't, at this moment, we couldn't find mommy and daddy in no nest. Where this location is that we found the little bird is, is very, um, um, these type of birds don't build nests in these kind of types of trees. Um, there's just no way that this bird, this bird was more than likely dropped from another predator is what we are um, probably thinking. So anyway, we ended up calling some wildlife um, rescue places around here and no one are, they're not taking any um, birds right now because there's uh, seems to be some sort of uh, bird flu or something um, virus going around that, that um, you know, can spread along um, other birds. And so what we're here supposed to do. What are we supposed to do? Well, you know, we're not really supposed to raise um, uh, wildlife in our homes and blah, 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 but I'm not about, uh, we weren't about to let this bird just pass away on its own. It barely had feathers and, and couldn't move on its own and definitely needed some nurturing. So I have been the caregiver of this little bird for this Friday will be three weeks, and um, she is just about ready to go and leave her nest. And I'm feeling a wave of love enter into me. Um, you know, this little bird has touched my heart <laughs> in a way that, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing how we can be given love um, from the smallest things um, that we never even think about. Since our um, puppy dog has passed away as well um, in January after the passing of my mother-in-law, I think uh, she passed, I think a month actually after my mother-in-law passed, to almost to the day, uh, we were, I was like, you know what, I don't want another animal in this home. Because, you know, I'm the one who ends up taking care of the household <laughs> and the animals and doing all of that stuff. Because, you know the mother figure tends to pick up on the responsibility of things. And so I have been pretty much a caregiver for so, so long in one way, shape, or another. And I know the hardship of having an animal that uh, you just, there's no flexibility 
really, unless you can find someone you can also take care of an animal. And then you're, pla you're placing a burden on somebody else because you want to have something. So even in that idea, if you hear what I said, the animals that we want to have, why do we have to have them? Why are we taking in animals? Yeah, I know that we have places uh, that need animals to be adopted. And if we're actually doing it for the purpose of, I'm going to give, I'm going to demonstrate love to this animal who has been um, abused or left unwanted or whatever the reason is behind these animals being abandoned or in um, an adoption agency. You know, of course, we're doing things out of the goodness of our heart. Because if we don't do something uh, unfortunately, these animals have a chance of being euthanized. So that is, you know, of course, um, kindness and generosity and love being shown. But we also need to think of possessing another thing. You know, of course, this reality, this earth that we live in, um, likes to possess things. Oh, I have to have this because it's so cute. I want, oh, it'll make me feel loved. And many times people take in animals because they want a connection with something that they are missing in human connectivity. You know there are lots of people who have a great relationship with animals, but they totally suck with humans. And then there are people who um, are great with people and totally suck or afraid of animals. Um, it's how can we still coexist simultaneously without the need to possess, to control, to keep. So this little bird here, of course, is teaching me that oh, she is so cute. I, I love her. You know, and I, I feel like her mom, and every time she sees me walking by, she flutters her little wings, just like when her what her mommy would do when she's ready to come and feed her little baby. And she flutters and flutters, and I am so touched by how she, she feels that I am and knows that I am her mother caregiver right now. And it's like, oh, you know, you're so sweet. Let me love you and, you know keep you to myself, but you know, I, I know I'm going to have to let her go. I know the right thing for me to do is to love her right in this very moment and let her go. This is what I have been talking about of the greatest form of love. And it's that a poem, I think, um, from a long time ago. And I used to have that poem even when I was a little girl, somehow it was given to me or I attained this um, postcard. It was a big picture frame, picture, plastic picture thing, sign or whatever. Uh, if you love something, set it free. And if it comes back, it's yours forever. That's what love really is. Complete freedom of not having to possess something, control something. It's loving it, even if it's at an arm's length. It's loving it, even if it doesn't love you in return. It's loving it, even if they are mean to you, don't show you your own value, whatever, whatever, whatever. Love is love, and love will let it go. So this bird is teaching me so many things. And in this time of receiving this bird in my life, I knew that it was um, symbolic of something. Anyway, I knew there's a lesson in here. And to be fully conscious is to be fully self-aware or self-realization. And what that means is to be completely aware of what's going on internally with you completely aware of your external experiences, understanding every single thing that you're going through, understanding everything that you are going through, not what somebody else is doing, not being busy body in and, well, that person isn't doing this, what that person's doing. And I've mentioned this in my past few videos. 
I've been going through lots of worry and anxiety about my granddaughter and my son um, and because they've been sick and oh, are you guys, you know, just kind of junk that I don't find value in. I've been worried about and trying to kind of overstep and control and um, try to manipulate situations. But I quickly realize what I'm doing. But it's been coming on over and over again. Even if I catch myself, it's, well, it's right back here again. I'm worried again about the same thing. Why can't I shake it? Well, you know, we have to see it. One, we have to understand it. And we have to go through it. For the, the, period, the amount of period that is, it is necessary in order for it to clear and go away. Because it's not about the experience you're going through. It's about the emotion, of course. And the emotion is attached to um, an element internally that is trying to balance. Therefore, transform into a higher element of usage where we can use it instead of um, allowing it to absorb and, and take away from us. So the, there's a lot of symbol of symbolisms in this tiny bird. The bird is a bird, of course. There's verses in the Bible pertaining to birds. And of course, after um, I was going through that experience of worry, and you know, it, I remember the Bible verse about... Um, you know, God's um, speaking about not to worry. You know, he takes care of the birds of the air and things like that. Um, and that we are more valuable to God um, than a sparrow is, or the birds are, if you want to just put birds in that place. Um, yet, God even takes care of something that um, can be sold. Um, for such a small amount of money. So that's just my interpretation anyway. But um, then, of course, you can think, well, the birds also have wings, and there's um, an element to wings. They flap and create air, and, of course, the birds require air in order to fly. Or, um, you know, the elements here, you know, uh, they don't actually need wind, but, you know, they are within the air flying. And that's God always taking care of the bird, right? Because air is also an element, and also it works with a love. And that's something that I have um, been speaking about here recently, through the month of uh, April, that is. And then, you know, you dig a little deeper, or you realize things um, on a more um, conscious awareness, or a higher perspective. And when we are dealing with animals, of course, animals are um, a part of the animal kingdom. We know that. But they don't have consciousness. Or they don't have an awareness of itself. They know that they're here. And they know that they eat. They know they have that type of mentality or they they're kind of like on auto play if you will just like how human beings are though we can be intellectual animals or we can rise above that and that's what it's actually been teaching me and understanding or telling me that and i have to understand that if i didn't understand the symbolism here of course i wouldn't be ready to receive this the removal of animal behavior. And that's what we have actually also been dealing with as we move away from Taurus even. And here we are into Gemini. Both of these signs, I mean all of our astrological signs are teaching us to let go of being the animal. Our animal behavior of um, um, wanting to live within this earth reality more or believing more within the earthly realm over the spiritual realm. Um, so let's see if I can find something. 
So here in Genesis 1, it states, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth. I have heard this, or people have spoken about this in my life of, well, we have dominion over everything. We can do what we want. We are human beings. We're at the top of the chain. That means we can do what we want with these animals around us. That's not what this is about. These um, things of what God is talking about in Genesis 1, the fish, the fowl, the kettle, the earth, and the creepy crawly things are elements contained within us, within the animal kingdom. When we are living in the animal kingdom, only we are behaving like animals. And then people who are saying, well, we are allowed to do what we want. We're superior beings to these. That's what God says. Well, we have to create the soul and the spirit by an action, by the work that we are performing every single day through self realization of our behavior and through understanding about what our step or faith is telling us, what our behavior is telling us, and how the lessons we are learning by getting back in love is telling us. You know, like in, I have actually also been seeing, I'm not sure if I mentioned this as I was talking here, um, ironically, after I, we rescued the bird, I began to see birds continuously in my, my visions about at least three times now um, consecutively. And it came with one bird to, you know, two birds to three birds, you know, several birds anyway. And it wasn't just about the bird. The birds began to flap their wings. Okay, so I had that um i just wanted to add to that but um that in order for us to get away from those creepy crawly things and um, all of those elements that are associated with what genesis 1 is, ta is talking about the soul must be intact which means that we are using the higher mind these elements have now um risen and can be used within the higher mind to transform the mind and the heart into the Adam, the original Adam, or Adam and Eve. Because Adam and Eve must work together, must respect each other to create the true soul and spirit connection. And David also mentioned in the Bible that man walks as but a shadow. So we mostly, most human beings, are living within this shadow face, an illusion, right? And we have to break the veil. And so we actually think, and you hear this all the time, that the veil is lifting. The veil is lifting. Um, and people are talking about it. Well, unless we are completing the complete work internally, the veil is not lifted from you. You do not see from the eyes of God. And so I have had another experience here about um, my perception of myself or my physical self. When I look into the mirror here at home, my mirror here at home, I look at myself with loving eyes. I see myself as a person who has done great work, who has gone through this path, who is who has struggled through this, yet who sees through truth. But the other day, my granddaughter had her first recital, ballet recital. And, you know, I I bought a few outfits because I, I haven't again been out of the home for about four years or so. And most of my my clothes are sweatpants or leggings, you know, for exercising in if I ever exercised. And so I didn't have anything appropriate. Um, so I found a top that I bought and then actually an existing pair of summer 
um, pants that I ended up wearing. And, uh, you know, I felt confident in my own skin. And as I saw myself from somebody else's perspective, somebody else's phone, when they took my image, because when someone else is using, taking a picture, of course, they're actually seeing you from their eyes. And you know how it is when someone else takes a picture compared to how you take a picture. Completely different, right? You can be beautiful in your camera and then absolutely hideous and disgusting and overweight or whatever it is, unkept in somebody else's. Why is that? Because it's still two different perspectives. As silly as it may seem, someone else is looking at you through their own eyes. And that's what I began to see. And I actually, it made me think about how Adam and Eve fell. Um, they took a bite of the apple, the seed fell, they looked at themselves, and were ashamed and saw themselves as seeing themselves as being naked, shameful of their own appearance. And I realized that I was seeing myself in shame. But you have to be aware of your own path, right? You have to be aware of your own path. Know where you are. Make a connection like I've, I've mentioned. Make that connection to what you're experiencing. Understand those emotions that you are feeling and make a connection to the path of where you are currently at. I have postponed all of my physical activities. Um, and that began um, 2019, I think it was. I don't really remember any longer. Something was off. I exercised for about an hour, sometimes two hours every single day. I was eating properly, loving my activities, but the weight piled on. And this was during, during the point of me knowing and understanding that God was doing something in my life. I didn't know it was an ascension cycle, but I knew God was performing something in my life. And in my heart, I felt exercising isn't something that I need to focus on right now. It's my complete faith. I ceased it. And I knew that if the weight came on, well, in its proper timing, weight will come off. And I kept thinking, well, I would love to get to the point in my life of maintaining a weight, of being able to look at myself and love myself without having to force a change upon myself. You know, I got into the habit for, um, what, four years of exercising religiously for about an hour, if not more, every day. I had to, because I wanted to look a certain way. I wanted to be beautiful for people. I wanted what people saw and what I saw to match. I didn't want there to be any discrimination or judgment. So I, I had to go through this. I've had to go through this stage and gaining weight um, by enjoying my life. Enjoying my life. And that's something I, I really can see. Although I've had lots of experiences, lots of um, um you know, that death in the family or illness and then the death, of course. And that can be time consuming. It can weigh you down, make you feel tired, whatever, all kinds of things. But it's a part of our path. Whatever our experiences are, it's there to teach us about who we are. And there were great lessons for me in my process. But I've wanted to be able to live. Just live and love myself for a living. You know, we, we, I, there are people who can eat whatever they want and not gain an ounce. Why? 
hmm, I've always heard, well, they've always responded, I have a great relationship with food. What does that even mean? And that's something I've taught myself, to have a great relationship with food. Now, our ascension cycle is going to either make us gain weight or lose weight, no matter what we are doing, based upon our path. So, you have to really accept or understand whatever it is that's happening in your life. It's happening to teach you something. I've always struggled with my weight and my appearance of being accepted for my weight. And so the view that I saw from my granddaughter's mom, oh, I was like, wow, are you kidding me? This is what you wore out there, you know, just criticizing myself for everything, for my entire appearance. Um, and then, of course, I here I am today, or even yesterday, I look at myself in my own mirror, in my own eyes, completely different. We have to get to the point of seeing ourselves from how our Creator sees ourselves. And in, in order to really see ourselves from that perspective, we must rise to meet our Creator. So that's what's taking place for myself. But if I got to the point of seeing my reflection and looking at this picture and I just become so depressed, You've, oh gosh, Christy, and beating myself up. You have really let yourself go. You got down to 123 back then, and now look at where you're right back up to that point again, and now you got to start all over. You know, I could have, you're ugly. No one's going to love you. Your husband's going to leave you. Whatever it was. If I have had stayed with a negativity, became sorrowful, allowed the ego to feed me junk, I would have fallen again. That's the temptation of eating the seed before the mixing or uh, without saving the seed. That happens or can happen every single moment that we fall for behaving like an animal. Something has this little bird is teaching me that I'm letting go of being an animal. The elements of those um, emotions that I have been holding on to or been feeling here the past few days are a part of my purification process. So to kind of make you understand it even more, because of how I have been feeling, although at that moment, I felt separated, right? That's how Adam and Eve again, they became separated. They were no longer unison, no longer working together, no longer respecting each other, no longer loving each other. They began to separate and saw from desire. I, for a brief moment, <laughs> had a desire to look a certain way for who? society, or my ego, for who society has told me that I am supposed to look like. That's why I began to see myself. Outside in the world, I see myself as the world wants me to see myself, because I forgot being outside in a different environment, I forgot who I was. That's what happened. I stepped out of my comfort zone and I forgot who Christy was. But yet when I came back home, I remembered. That wasn't you who you saw the other day. That's not you who you saw in the pictures. This is you. It's easy to be one way when we're not, um, when we're in our own environment, when we feel comfortable. We prove ourselves about who we really are when we get outside of our comfort zone. 
So that's why you we can't refrain from going somewhere, from doing things, from certain people, from situations, and think that we are who we are. It's like it's easy to love when all of life is just going great. When life is tearing you down one after another, people are beating you up, um, nothing's going right. It's difficult. It's difficult to prove that you are love or love anybody when life is miserable. And so the, the beasts that God talks about in Genesis that I just read previously, those are the beasts of the field that are within you. The field, of course, is our physical body. The beasts are the animalistic desires that we try to control, um, such as the violence and the lust and the passion and the greed. Um, judgment, all that, that stuff. Um, and the birds of the air signify the thoughts and the ideas and desires of the mind. And to be a real Adam or a real Shava or Eve is to be in dominion over our own mind, over the body, and command our behavior to be correct. Um, understanding. It's like, again, it's that mom and, and dad who are always bickering inside. Are you going to be rebellious um, and go against what mom and dad are doing? Or are you going to be obedient, respectful, and listen? Because it's our inner guidance that's always teaching us about what is true and what is wrong and correct. And if we aren't listening, we're that rebellious child. We're going against our inner being, and therefore we are not actually creating the soul and spirit within. We're actually going to be falling continuously over and over again. Um, and so I guess uh, I might leave it at this today. And in closing, what I am really trying to say is that the soul, if we contain the soul, in spirit because we have both then the soul and spirit is going to teach us about the goodness of who we are and the goodness that exists around us and that is how we become true living humans or humans with the soul and spirit united within them this is Christy. Much love, health, and healing your way. I am bringing purpose to your life. Take care.